said that a person is closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sajda and this is the time you should increase your supplication who is better in speech than one who invites to the way of thy Lord works righteousness and says the Rabbi Since the musical instruments are haram, a human being imitating the haram musical instrument, according to scholars, is also haram. Peaceful, peaceful, peace. Peaceful, 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 peace. Peaceful, 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 peace. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalam. Ala rasulillah wa ala alayhi wa sallam ajmeen. Amma abad. A'udhu billahi min shaytani rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim. Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhijat linnaas. Ta'amiruna bil ma'roofi wa tanhawna inni munkar. Wa tu'minuna billah. Rabbi shalli sadri wa yisilli amri. Wa halul ugdata min lisani afkaw kawli. I welcome all the viewers of the Peace TV Network. The Peace TV English. The Peace TV Urdu. The Peace TV Bangla and the Peace TV Chinese, as well as my four social media platforms, which are the Facebook, the YouTube, the Instagram, and Twitter. I welcome all the viewers with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, be on all of you. And I welcome all of you to this program. Ask Dr. Zakir. Season number one, session number five. Here you're most welcome to ask any questions on Islam and compatible religion, or any question which a non-Muslim or an atheist may have asked you regarding Islam and you could not answer, or any questions which come on the media, which are misconceptions about Islam, which are attacking Islam, this is the opportunity. You can ask your questions on any of my four social media platforms, but see to it that the question is in brief. Some of the questions are so long, and the longer it is, the more chances it will be rejected. Keep your question brief and to the point, and one question at a time. Besides social media, the best would be that you should ask your question as a text message on the WhatsApp, with mentioning the question in brief, with your name, your profession, your city, and the country of residence, to the WhatsApp number plus Six zero double one two six nine five three eight nine five. I repeat, you can text your question in brief, mentioning your name, your profession, your city, and the country of origin to the WhatsApp number plus six zero double one two six nine five three eight nine five. The first question asked on the WhatsApp is by Periyar Alam Shah from Tamil Nadu, India. And Brother Periyar is asking the question, how can Muslims coexist peacefully with Hindus while Allah hates kafirs and commands Muslims in the Quran to do jihad against their faith? Quran is indeed a terror manual against Hinduism. Muslims want to abolish Hinduism and convert Hindustan into Islamistan. They want to fulfill the command of Allah. I fully support Modi ji and Amit Shah ji for a Muslim free Hindu Rashtra. Kick Muslims out to Pakistan or Kabristan. Jai Hind. Our Hindu brother, uh, Brother Pariyar, has 
asked a very important question. And he's asking the question that how can Muslims and Hindus coexist peacefully? While Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that hates kafirs and commands Muslims in the Quran to do jihad against their faith. There are about five, six questions in this one long question. The first is that how can Muslims and Hindus coexist when Allah hates the kafir? What is the meaning of the Arabic word kafir? The Arabic word kafir comes from the root word kufr, which means to reject, which means to hide. So kafir means those who reject. I would like to ask a simple question to Brother Pariyar, that if you have a company and there are hundreds of employees that you have, and if your employee rejects the commandment that you have given him, or the work you have given him, what will you do? Will you praise him? Will you love him? Or will you dislike him? And mind you, they are only employees. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. He is almighty God. He has created all the human beings. More than seven and a half billion human beings today in the world that are there. And all that came in the past. He is the creator. And then after he is the creator, when he requests you to follow a few of his commandments and you do not follow, what do you expect him to love you? But natural. So he will not like you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you rightly said that he hates the kafir. Kafir means those who reject the commandment of Almighty God. So anyone who obeys the commandment of Almighty God, he loves them. Those who reject his commandment, who disobey him, he will not like them. This is but natural. So what is wrong in it? And the second part of your first question is that Quran says that we should do jihad with these kafir. You are right. If you read the Quran, the Quran says in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 52, that do jihad with the Quran against the unbelievers, with the kafir. Here Allah is advising us that jihad is the Arabic word which means to strive, which means to struggle. Unfortunately, the media has promoted that jihad means something to kill, or jihad only means that you go for a war. This is not the right concept. The real meaning of the Arabic word jihad comes from the Arabic word jihada, which means to strive, which means to struggle. So jihad basically means to strive and struggle. Here Allah is telling that you strive and struggle against the unbelievers. Those who reject the Quran, you strive and struggle with the Quran. That means Allah is telling us to convey the message of the Quran, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God to the unbelievers. So what is wrong in that? This is good that Allah is telling you to strive and struggle to convey the message, the commandment of the Creator. Then the question asks, Quran is indeed a terror manual against Hinduism. Let me give you an example that every country has a police force and they have laws in the country, what you should do, what you should not do. And if you go against the law, there are punishments which are mentioned. Every country has a law that if you rob, there'll be so and so punishment. If you murder someone, so and so is the punishment. And if you cheat, so and so is the punishment. If you do fraud. Similarly, Quran is the future world constitution. It is the law book of our creator, how a human being should lead his life. If you allow me to call a human being a machine, it is the most complicated machine on the face of the earth. The glorious Quran is the instruction manual for the human being, the do's and don'ts. And if this instruction manual to prevent people committing crimes has given a punishment for robbing or for murdering an innocent human being or for cheating, then why do you call it a terror manual? If you call it a terror manual, that means all the countries, the court of law, which has a constitution and where it says in the law book the punishment for the crimes, then every country will have a terror manual. So it's a misunderstanding. It is the guidance given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the human beings about the do's and don'ts. And if you do not do certain things which are commandments of Almighty God, like how you have rules in the country, if you break a signal, there are punishments for it. So similarly, this is a book to prevent the wrongdoing by the human beings. It is a misconception that it is a terror manual. Actually, it's a manual for peace. If someone calls the law of the country as a terror manual, that means the person hasn't understood the law of the country. It is actually a peaceful manual. So that peace prevails in that country. If 
this law wasn't there in the country, the country would have been in chaos. So because of this law, peace is maintained. Similarly, this is the law book of our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let peace prevail throughout the world. In the next part, our brother Periyar says that Muslims want to abolish Hinduism and convert Hindustan into Islamistan. They want to fulfill the command of Allah. Regarding a question that Muslims want to convert Hindustan into Islamistan, first let me tell you that the word Hindu is a misnomer. Where did it come from? Who gave this word Hindu? According to historical books, we come to know that the word Hindu is not present in any of the scriptures of Hinduism. According to Jawaharlal Nehru, in his book Discover India, he says the first time this word was used was in the 8th century. It is never found in any of the Hindu scriptures. It was first used in the 8th century when the Persians, when the Muslim Arabs came to India. And even the historians say that this word was given by the Muslims. So the word Hindu is given by the Muslims for the people living in the land of the Indus Valley. The real name of the religion, those who follow the Vedas, should be Vedantist. So this Hinduism is a misnomer. And really if you come to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God, has only sent down one religion for the whole of humankind. It is later on that human beings kept on manipulating it. And the moment the message got changed, Allah sent a new messenger with a new message to get the people to the straight path. So all the messengers of Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they taught nothing but submitting your will to Almighty God. And the religion of submitting your will, in Arabic we say Islam. Islam comes from the root word salam, which means peace. It's also derived from the Arabic word silm, which means submitting over to God. So Islam means peace acquired by submitting over to Almighty God. And anyone who acquires peace by submitting over to Almighty God is called as a Muslim. So here Muslims want all the human beings in the world, not only in India, the Muslims want all the human beings in the world that they should follow the commandment of Almighty God. They should worship only Almighty God and no one else. Because we love our brother human beings. And we want them to follow the commandment of the Creator, Almighty God, which all the major religions, if you read the scriptures, all the major religions, the scriptures, basic messages that you worship only one God, do not make images of God, and worship Him alone and follow His command. Peace, peaceful, 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 peace. The brother further says that I fully support. Modi ji and Amit Shah ji for a Muslim free Hindu Rashtra. Regarding as far as our Prime Minister Narendra Modi and our Home Minister Amit Shah is concerned, according to me, both these people, they do not follow the Hindu scriptures. They don't follow the Vedas. They are breaking the rules of their own scripture. What they are promoting is not Hinduism or Vedantism, they are promoting Hindutva, their own brand. And if you read the Vedas, there are many things that our Prime Minister and Home Minister are not following from the Hindu scriptures. They are killing people, they are torturing people, all this is against the scriptures. If you analyze and read the teachings of the Vedas, I can proudly say that I follow more of the teachings of the Vedas than Amit Shah and Modi ji put together. Because I have read the Hindu scriptures. I doubt whether Narendra Modi has read the Vedas. I doubt whether Amit Shah has read the Veda. And even if they have read the Veda, I doubt whether they have understood. And I don't think so they practice. There are so many things that they violate. There is so much of anarchy going, so much of oppression going out in India. So much of innocent people are being killed on their advice. So much of cheating is there, so much of corruption is there. All these are against the teachings of Vedas. So if you want to judge a person only on the teachings of Veda, then Alhamdulillah, I, Dr. Zakir Naik, who is a Muslim, can proudly say that I follow more of the teachings of Veda than Narendra, Narendra Modi, Modi or Amit Shah. So, so what, they're what they're doing, doing is, is they are, they taking, are the taking the people, people away, away from the true teachings, teachings of Hinduism. And regarding, and regarding your last, last statement, statement that you that said, you said that, that, that kick, kick, 
مسلم آؤٹ ٹو پاکستان اور قبرستان لیٹ اس انڈرسٹینڈ واٹ از دا میننگ آف دا ورڈ پاکستان پاکستان پاک مینس سیکرٹ ہولی اسٹان مینس لینڈ ہولی لینڈ آئی ایم ناٹ ریفرنگ ٹو دا پاکستان کنٹری آر نیبر کنٹری آئی ایم ناٹ ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دیٹ بٹ اف یو لٹرلی اٹ سی دیٹ دا مسلم شوڈ بی کک ٹو پاکستان ٹو اے ہولی لینڈ دیٹ مینس یو ڈونٹ کنسڈر انڈیا ٹو بی ہولی یو ڈونٹ کنسڈر انڈیا ٹو بی سیکرٹ یو ڈونٹ کنسڈر انڈیا ٹو بی اے گڈ کنٹری یا آئی کنسڈر انڈیا ٹو بی اے گڈ کنٹری اٹ از فیو پالیٹیشینز ہو چینجنگ دا ایٹماسفیئر اینڈ آر کوزنگ کیوس ان دا کنٹری بٹ ایز اے کنٹری انڈیا واز اے ویری گڈ کنٹری فار مینی ایئرس اٹ از اے یٹ اے گڈ کنٹری دیر آر سم پالیٹیشینز ہو فار دا الٹیریئر موٹیوز دے آر اسپوائلنگ دا نیم آف دا کنٹری اینڈ دے آر کوزنگ کیوس اینڈ وائلنس ان دا کنٹری سو اف یو سی that Muslim should be kicked out to a holy land again Pakistan Pak is sacred or pure something which is pure to a pure land you are not considering India to be pure I am not talking about our neighboring country Pakistan and kick the Muslims to Qabristan it is every human being has to die Allah says in the Quran he gave life and he will cause you to die Every human being, no one can save you. No Modi ji, no Amish Shah ji can save any human being. When Allah has destined you, the day you will die, you will die, no one can save you. If Allah wants to keep you alive, no one can kill you. So every human being is born in this world and he has to die. So every human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, they have to die. So my aim is to make the whole world a sacred place, a whole world a park place. whole world so all the human beings in the world should follow the commandments of almighty god and if you truly regarding your first part of the question that how can muslims and hindus coexist the best way they can coexist that both of them should read the scriptures with understanding and at least agree to follow what is common if the hindus read the vedas with understanding if they understand sanskrit and if they read and if the muslims read the quran with understanding and let us agree to follow what is coming what is different we'll discuss tomorrow at least let us agree to follow what is coming the hindus believe that veda is the word of god the muslim believe that the quran is the word of god let us come to common terms let us agree to follow what is common in both these sacred scriptures and when we do a comparative study i have given a lecture on the topic similarities between islam and hinduism and i have given various similarities number one is both the religions say that we should worship only one god both the religions say that you should not make any idols any images of almighty god both the religions say that the last and final messenger to come is prophet muhammad peace be upon him both the religions say that when we pray we should do sujood we should do prostration both the religions say that we should do charity both the religions say that we should fast there are many similarities So why don't we agree to follow what is common? Why are we creating fictitious animosity? So those people who believe in getting the human beings together on the common platform are the real good human beings. Those who for the ulterior motives want for the personal benefit, they create the animosity so that they can get a benefit in this world. But in the hereafter, surely they'll be among the losers. So I request my Hindus and Muslim brothers of India that read the scriptures and let us at least agree to follow what is common. What is different, we can discuss tomorrow. And inshallah, if the Hindus and Muslims in India are united, there will be a superpower. India was a superpower a few centuries ago. India was a superpower. It was number one country in the world. If we go back and unite, go back to our scriptures and unite and follow it, inshallah again, we'll be a superpower. Hope that answers the question. The next question from Furqan from Delhi, India. What will happen to good non-Muslims? We have seen some very good-hearted journalists like Ravish Kumar, etc., who speak the truth, take sides of Muslims and show the ugly truth of the oppressors. It is not just him. There are many others from different professions who are like him. So what will Allah do to them if they don't die as Muslims, as they don't deserve equal punishment like other big wrongdoers? In brackets, you know their names. The question is asking that 
non-Muslims are of different types. Some are good non-Muslims, some are very bad, some are extremely bad. So will all of them get the same punishment? And the answer is no. How we have in Jannah, different levels of Jannah. There is Jannah the Firdos, Jannah the Firdos on Allah. In the garden, there is a garden. So all those who go to Jannah will not be on the same level. The Muslims that will go to Jannah would be different as compared to the Ambiyas. The Ambiyas are the best, they are the highest, the messengers. And Muhammad is the highest. Then you'll have the Khulfarashidin, you have the Sahabat. Of course, we will not be on the same level as the messengers, as the Sahabat, as the Khulfarashidin. And we pray to Allah that maybe we go to Jannah. So that there are levels in Jannah, there are also levels in the hell. And those of the non-Muslims who do good deeds, our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that they will get the reward in this world itself. Someone has done a good deed, he will get a reward, maybe he'll get wealth, maybe he'll get fame. So all non-Muslims who do good deeds, but they are committing the major sin of shirk, as I mentioned in my earlier answer. If they do the major sin of shirk, that is the associate partners with God, then they get negative points. They will not be able to enter Jannah. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa chapter 4, verse number 48, and in Surah Nisa chapter number 4, verse number 116, that Allah, if He wishes, may forgive anything, but the sin of shirk He'll never forgive. So anyone dies as a mushrik without repenting, then Allah will not forgive him. So all the other good deeds that He has done, which are of lesser value, as I mentioned in my earlier answer, Allah will reward them in this world itself. And in the Akhirah, in the next life, but natural, in the Jahannam, in the hell, there are different levels. Some are the lowest level of Jahannam, which will be the Munafikeen and those which are wrongdoers like Firon and Hitler and maybe into brackets who you mentioned, we know you're talking about. They will be there, inshallah. But always there is a possibility that even those people who are non-Muslims and maybe against Islam, there are chances that Allah may give them hidayah. What I do, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he give that to these good non-Muslims so that they come to the fold of Islam. And we never know. We know that every day there are thousands of non-Muslims throughout the world accepting Islam. And once they accept Islam, many of them, they become better practicing Muslims than those who are born in a Muslim family. So alhamdulillah, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he give hidayah to these people so that inshallah they can go to Jannah inshallah and we pray that these people who are fighting for the truth but irrespective whether they get there or not in this world Allah will reward them so that they cannot object that where has the reward gone for the good actions they have done hope that answers the question the next question from Muhammad Adil India my father left me when I was 18 years old and I had no one to look after me my mother left me when I was 11 years old. I stayed as a paying guest and worked to survive. Today, alhamdulillah, I earn good amount of money to feed myself. Now father asked me to give money to him on monthly basis, which will be around five to 6,000 rupees per month. Should I give the money to my father as my father didn't take care of me? The brother asked the question that his father left him at the age of 18, mother left him at the age of 11, they did not take care of him, and now he's got a good job, he's earning good money, and father is asking monthly approximately five to 6,000 rupees, should he give him or not? I do not know the reason why the father left you. But even if I agree for the sake of argument, hypothetically, that he did not take care of you. If he did not take care of you, and if he did not do his duty, that doesn't mean that you should not do your duty. You, as a good son, should do your duty. And taking care of the parent is a requirement that every human being, every Muslim, should take care of the parent when they grow up. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Fusila, chapter number 41, verse number 34, that repel evil with good. You may never know that the person who is the enemy will become your friend. And here, your father is not your enemy. He's your father. I agree with you, he did not take care of you. But you have to do your duty. And if you do your duty, inshallah, you'll go to Jannah. So according to me, if your father is asking for five to 6,000 rupees, I would say that give him 9,000, give him 10,000 rupees. Give him more than what he's asking, if Allah has given you. If Allah has not given you, 
and if you can afford 5,000, give 5,000. Or if you cannot, yet you sacrifice your luxury and give money to your father, inshallah, you will be doing a great deed of charity. And especially if you are doing to your father, it is your requirement, it is your duty, it's your fard. So my suggestion to you is that if he's asking for five or six thousand rupees, give him much more, give him ten thousand rupees, inshallah that will benefit you in this world as well as the akhirah.